It's fairly easy to determine that the Western world was elated when the USSR collapsed. But what was the reaction of the rest of the communist world? How did nations like China, Vietnam and Cuba feel about the leading communist state falling apart? So perhaps the USSR's closest ally was Cuba and Fidel Castro had a few choice words. For a start, he felt that it was completely avoidable and blamed Gorbachev for reforming everything too quickly. Castro was critical from an ideological perspective, but he had much more practical reasons to be upset. So as of the American trade embargo, Cuba relied on the USSR for the majority of its trade. And it's hard to trade with a defunct state, as demonstrated by the fact that Cuban exports to the post-Soviet states decreased by 93% of what it had been three years earlier. This led to a near collapse of the Cuban economy, so things were pretty bad. As such, Cuba turned to the Western world and found willing markets, except one for its goods. Cuba's other concern was security, since the USSR was its guarantor and there were concerns about what the United States was going to do. Turns out it was nothing, but for Cuba, the years after the collapse of the USSR were extremely difficult. So what about China, the second most prominent communist state and one which had a pretty rocky relationship with the Soviet Union? Well, first of all, Jiang Zemin, the leader of the Chinese Communist Party, came to a different conclusion to Castro. He believed that the USSR had collapsed because the reforms hadn't gone far enough and that the wrong people had been asked to implement them. So how did the collapse affect China's policies? Well, internally, there was basically zero change, since China was dealing with its own issues and its leadership was keen to push ahead with economic reforms. In terms of foreign policy, the Chinese government believed that the West was now going to focus on fomenting internal revolution there, and that they would use the newly non-communist Russia as well as Taiwan to help with this. Now, the fear of some reverse domino effect wasn't without merit, since only a year later, Mongolia would also see the end of communist rule. So what about Vietnam? The leadership there was obviously shocked by the decline and collapse of Soviet communism, but the trauma was mostly ideological. Vietnam was primarily concerned with the economic ramifications of the USSR's collapse and so sought to improve relations with China so that they could both be better protected. In terms of immediate fears, the Vietnamese leadership had little concern since they believed that the collapse of the USSR was down to ethnic tensions, something that they didn't have to deal with. And as for North Korea, well, Kim Il-sung and the North Korean leadership were certainly worried about themselves facing the same fate as East Germany and being incorporated into their neighbouring democratic state. However, for the past 20 years they'd been weaning themselves off of Soviet support and so the collapse wasn't too damaging. In fact, the only immediate problems were that the new Russian Federation called for talks between the North and the South and that reunification should be a potential end goal. Now, the rest of the communist world was fairly quiet about it and this was because they'd either seen the writing on the wall or because it didn't affect them too much. Yugoslavian politicians, for example, placed the blame on the Russian ethnic majority, since they felt that it was the duty of the country's largest ethnic group to keep things together in the face of any threats a theory that they themselves would put to the test not long afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this episode and a special thanks to all my Patreon supporters, James Bizanet, Marvin Cassow, A Man of Culture, Kelly Moneymaker, Danny Maloney, John Bizquez, Rob Waterhouse, Mo, Aaron the White, James Castaneda, Gustav Swan, Jordan Longley, Marcus Arsner, Spinning Three Plates, Cooling Castleman, Filda Oink Oink, Rashid Ali, David Silverman, Izzy, Maggie Pakskowski, Spencer Lightfoot, Winston Kaywood, Robert Wetzel, Lexi Schwinn, Anthony Beckett and Sky Chappelle. Everybody was worried about the nukes, though.